We have agonist and antagonist, even though we finally got to this slide, we've been talking about it all chapter. Which one would be an example of a group, a group of agonist and antagonist muscles? Quads and hamstrings, right? So, the agonist is the muscle or muscle group performing a contraction, and the antagonist is the muscle or muscle group that performs the opposite action. It's being stretched while the agonist is working. And there's an example, quads and hamstrings. And they go back and forth of who's agonist and who's antagonist. Like two little brothers fighting. And we know about that? It was, uh, it was in our house. There were just three boys, and it was crazy. Poor mom. Come on. I pushed you. All right. Weight training. If you're doing weight training and it's done properly through the full range of motion, then it will not impair your flexibility. As opposed to people who do short little things like this, all right, and then their shoulders start to cave in because they don't have the flexibility now in their pecs, and so it pulls their shoulders in. Or if they're only doing front and they're not doing rows and doing things in the back, then shoulders will cave in. Okay? If done properly through the full range of motion, it will not impair flexibility. Flexibility is measuring your joint range of motion. Now, here's the important part. Okay? So she comes in, she's whining because she's got like some KT tape or something like that on her, on her leg. And the KT tape is good for what? You're right. Shake your head. So, comes in, got the KT tape on, and says, my knee has been hurting. Okay? So, let's reach in this drawer behind you, or beside you, or around you. Now, find that little thing. Yeah, no, under, yeah, under, yeah, those, yeah, looks like a bunch of stuff, yeah. That's a biggie. Yes. So we can go and put this on her joint line, and we know we start at zero, where it's straight, and she bends it, all right? It's got two measurements over here. That's either 50 degrees or 140 degrees. Which one is it? Hundred and forty. Because you know very well that this is ninety. Ninety is a right angle, right? Don't feel bad. I've seen people take the state test that would do this and they would not even get fifty or a hundred and forty. They would come over here and say, uh sixty. I don't know how. I'm just saying, don't feel bad. But learning how to read this little thing. Is a nifty little it's a nifty little habit. It tells us how much the range of motion is, which can tell us how much increase or decrease 
your athlete might have as they're supposed to be getting better, right? So what's this thing called? Very good question. So on the next slide, it's called a goniometer. But you can see this dude using the goniometer in the picture, and it might be a little difficult to use, but it's got to be the same person that does it to have a real good, accurate idea if they're getting better or not. Because if I'm measuring it, and she's like so, and I'm measuring that she's at 110 degrees. It's 110 degrees. But if somebody else has just got this on an anatomical spot that they normally use, and it says it's 100 degrees, we're going to go, oh my gosh, what's wrong with her? She's lost 10 degrees, but actually she hasn't. It was a, a variable that can be wiped out by having the same person work with the same athlete. So you probably, if it's done by the same person, you'll have a good idea as to improvement or decreases of your range of motion. Okay? So there he is. He's using ping, a goniometer. Tomorrow, you need to spell goniometer. You either make it or you break it. You actually have two, two assignments for tomorrow. One is, you're going to come in, you're going to break out a piece of paper, you're not going to use your notes, and you're going to write the word goniometer. You're going to give it to me or Miss Bates to know how to spell it. It ought to be pretty easy because most of it, half of it, you should know, M-E-T-E-R, right? gon ni a me -er. So, you put the two arms, you find right in the middle of the joint is right where this part goes, in the middle, and then you find the long axis of the bones of what you're using. Now. What joints can you use this with? You're pretty close, right. Pretty close to all of them. They make goniometers for backs. They make goniometers, a little bitty one for fingers. They make them for toes. They make them for ankles. They, and you don't even have to have a specialized one for your ankle. You can just use the long axis of one bone and the long axis of either metatarsal 1 or metatarsal 5 because they're long enough to where there's not any space given up. So, goniometer. All right, here's your muscle contraction. Muscular strength. All right? Anybody been in athletics? And do a one rep max. One rep. One max out. You've heard of, hey, we got to go max out this week. Guys walking around, hey, hey we're going to max it out this week. What did you max out at, Joey? I got 210. Aha! You suck. I got 212. <laughs> well, both of you stink because I got 212 and a half. I'm the strongest. All right? One max rep. The maximum force that can be applied by a muscle during a single maximum contraction is your strength. Not only do you need strength, but... You need endurance. Now, here in about April, they're going to have all these college guys that just got done playing football. They're going to, hey, I want to play in the NFL. How about you? Yeah, I do too. How about you? Well, I'm the strongest. I got 212 and a half. I should be in the NFL. Well, maybe he got one rep strength, but does he have muscular endurance? So they'll do. They'll find out what their maximum strength is. And then they'll come back a couple of days later, and they'll put them on a bench press, and they'll put 225 pounds. All right? That's the bar, and a 45 pound here, and a 45 pound here. All right? Nope. And another, and another. They've got two over there, 90, 90 is 180, and then they'll have 90 or 45 in the middle. So they'll have 235 pounds. and 
they'll say, sit down and go. So that guy is going home with 225. Boom. Boom. As many as he can. Those offensive linemen who are really big, you'll see them do 30. 35 of them. Muscular endurance. The ability to perform repetitive muscular contractions against some resistance. That's good to know. Now, the dude that has 212 and a half, he might not be able to do as many as the dude that does 212. All right? He might not have the endurance. It's great that you can explode out, but the endurance was lasting. Play four quarters, not just one play. Unless you're a punter. Right? Endurance. The ability, the ability to perform repetitive muscular contractions against some resistance. All right? Must have to go over the head. Sure do. Now, we're going to contract these muscles to make things work, right? Can anybody contract muscle? I bet you're do all doing it right now. You just did. You're doing it. Yep, you're doing it. Yep, yep, yep. You're all doing it. Huh? All right, but we're not talking about cardiac muscle. If you want to get into that, there's three types of muscle. What three types of muscle are they? Smooth, striated, and cardiac. Because you brought that up, we're probably going to need to know what the three muscles are. So, isometric. Okay, we're going to do an isometric contraction. We are. We're all going to do it. You ready? Put your hands together. Come on, get it out away from you. Your hands together, not on your elbows. Come on, Mabel, get your elbows off the table if you're able. All right, ready? Push as hard as you can. Harder. All right. Isometric contraction. We are doing a contraction without any change of the length of the muscle. The way we get change in length of the muscle is it either gets shorter, my biceps getting shorter, or if I put heavy weight in here, and it's not heavy weight, so it either gets shorter or I put twice as much weight and I try and keep it from going down. Right? That would be concentric. Come here. Concentric. Come here. Concentric. Getting shorter the distance. Come here. You see what I'm doing here? Trying to get this in your brain that those are C's. Come here. Concentric. Email goes away from you when you send it. Eccentric. Evacuate. So it gets longer. All right. So. We know about these. We see these in the weight room all the time, right? Eccentric, concentric. What about isometric? She's been doing straight leg raises. Have you seen that? Before that, she could do straight. Or she can do quad sets. Quad sets are the easiest contraction there is for rehab, and that would be, all right, put your leg out and contract your quad. It's an isometric contraction. Will I get stronger? Theory is says, yeah, you can. Now, the only thing about it, though, is, is that this guy, I used to read this stuff in the back of comic books when I was a little boy because we didn't have TV. We had comic books. There wasn't even TV invented. Well, there were no, we couldn't even go. We couldn't afford a movie theater. I couldn't find a nickel. You had to, you had to work all day to get a nickel, and I'd spend it on a, on a Coke instead of going to movie theater. So anyway, in the back of the comic book, there is this dude in here. His name's Charles Atlas. And you need to write down his name because you're going to tell me about Charles Atlas, where he's from. Etc. You can find it on Wikipedia, something, something. The wikis, the WikiLeaks. Hadn't written it down. Charles Atlas, and it's due tomorrow. So 
Charles Atlas had a deal in his in the back of the comic book that said, I was a 98-pound weakling at the beach, and I used to get beat up. But now no one touches me. And then in the next frame, the next picture, he's this great big guy, and he's pushing away, he's bullying the guy away from the girls. So essentially what it was saying is, is that you gotta have muscles to get the girls at the beach. Okay? And that he had this plan, and for two dollars and fifty cents, which is holy smokes, like a month's worth of allowance. For two dollars and fifty cents, you could send it in to him with a self-addressed stamped envelope. Have you ever heard of such? What's a self-addressed stamped envelope? Yeah, you put your name on it, and you put a stamp on it. You fold it up, you put it in the envelope for two fifty. He pulls it out, and then he puts it in there so he doesn't even pay for the postage. Deep sucker. Charles Atlas would show you how to do isometric exercises. You didn't need money. All right, so I'd start here, and then I'd come here, and then I'd come here. I'm working on my right side, and then I'd come here. Am I getting stronger? Yeah, but you're only getting stronger here, 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 here. You're not getting stronger in between. So it'd be uh, 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 uh. So you'd have jerky motion. Not a great thing. Tell me about Charles Atlas, okay? It's an easy way to bring a grade up. Easy way. Charles Atlas. Eccentric, concentric. Concentric is shortening or lengthening. Yes, come here. Eccentric is lengthening. <gasps> Hypertrophy. Oh my gosh. Have you ever heard of such a word? Isn't it pretty? Hypertrophy. It should be in poetry. It's so pretty. Hypertrophy is what she wants to do. She wants hypertrophy for her fastest medialis oblique. What did you do to your leg? Uh, yeah, okay. So the VMO is going to keep her, v, VMO, part of her quads are going to keep her kneecap from being weak while she's getting better. So she wants it to hypertrophy. Hypertrophy. You see something? There's a prefix in there. Does anybody see the prefix? Huh? What's the prefix? Prefix is what comes in front of a word. Hyper. Hyperactive. Hyperthermic. Hypertension. Hyper crazy. That was what they said it. Yeah. Hyper above and beyond. Hypertrophy. Who? See a weasel? So the opposite, this is where muscles get larger, right? In response to training. The opposite then is Atrophy. Atrophy. That's where muscles decrease in size and strength and cells of the size size of cells because of inactivity. People in the space station are doing a lot of they're doing a lot of research on that. Even riding a bicycle on the space station, just the motion, the vibration causes the space station to get out of orbit. Because there's no gravity to keep it going. And in physics says, body in motion stays in motion, what? Unless acted upon by another force. The other force is what, Chrissy? Not that boring. I'm very exciting. The other force is themselves are moving causing the wheel to go around, whatever it is. And so then they have to have f enough fuel on the space station to push them back into the orbit that they were in. That's a good question. We talked about that two weeks ago because 
NASA is using this stuff to try and keep their astronauts from having atrophy. Also in space, there is no what? So, gravity is what we're fighting against here on Earth. That's what makes us stronger. All right, let me see my watch. It's a great watch, it is. Overtraining. You know, if you, if you don't use it, you lose it. But if you abuse it, you lose it too. Right? Got a girlfriend, you're hateful to her, she ain't going to be there. Got a boyfriend, you're hateful to him. You're not going to have him around. So overtraining can have negative effect on the development of muscle strength, such as you abuse it, you lose it. You have a psychological breakdown because of it. You also get a physiological breakdown. Psychologically, you're going, oh, man, I'm doing all this work and I'm getting nothing about it. So... Physiological effect is you're abusing the muscle, the muscle, sort of like running in shoes that are too old. So if your shoes are too old and you're doing too much work, your shins start to get beat up. You end up with shin splints. You tear up this muscle right here too much, right? You constantly tear it up. It's not going to heal. So Fatigue. By, yeah, fatigue. You gotta get to bed. But if you're over if you're over using your or over training, your body's gonna be wore out because it's got to repair itself. Overtraining's not a great thing. It's a terrible thing. Alright? It'll also make you sick. Terribly sick. If you're feeling okay. Yep, you don't have a fever. Alright, so sickness. Reversibility. So, if you if you lift weights, right, and then you quit lifting weights, so you can still stay stay that strong. Why not? What? Pressure. Pressure is what's around you. You don't use it, you lose it. So you get reversibility. So your muscles will atrophy, where we just learned, get smaller in cell size, weaker by not using them. So you'll decrease both in mass and strength. And it starts as little as 48 hours after your last workout. That's why they say, we do arms on Monday, two, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We do legs on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. We finally get one day of rest, and we start it all over again. So as little as 48 hours. So how do you increase? Well, you use PRE, progressive resistance exercise. And we'll use that PRE in here all the time. We start off with a yellow band, we move to a green band, we move to the red band, we move to the blue band, we move to the black band, because each band is stronger. Because they want to get stronger. So you increase your weight as you work out. You're not wanting to maintain your strength, you're wanting to increase your strength. That's your goal. Important to include a flexibility program. Where am I on here? Is that the last one? Holy so what are we going to do tomorrow? Tomorrow, you're going to come in, and you're going to hand me something. And that something's going to talk about what? Charles Atlas. I want to know about Charles Atlas. Yeah, he's a dude. What kind of dude? He was pretty smart. All right. Even if he wasn't smart strength-wise, he was smart marketing-wise. And then we're going to have a little quiz. And it's just a one-word quiz. And what's that word? Can you spell it? You. 